Hello and welcome to Theta Sigma's Doctor Who podcast number 39. In this week's show, we're taking a look at one of the Doctor's shortest-lived companions in the classic series, Unit Medical Officer Harry Sullivan. But before that, we have some very exciting Big Finish audio news, as well as a little look at the Day of the Doctor prequel, The Night of the Doctor. Now, I should warn you at this point that there will be spoilers as far as The Night of the Doctor is concerned, so if you've not yet watched it, find the link somewhere, or head on over to the BBC's Doctor Who page to see it. You have been warned. And there's also some feedback to get through as well. Now, regular listeners to the show will know that I don't usually run news stories. There are plenty of Doctor Who podcasts out there that have news segments for those that want to listen, and I wanted this podcast to be a little bit different. But on this occasion, the news that's broken was so exciting for me that I wanted to share it with you, although some of you may already have seen it or heard it on the social networking grapevine. What is it? Well, it has been confirmed that 4th Doctor Tom Baker and Romana 2 Lala Ward are to reunite with the voice of K-9 John Leeson for a series of audio adventures to be released in 2015. Says this month's Doctor Who magazine, the trio will make their big finish debut in a January 2015 box set called The Fourth Doctor by Gareth Roberts. According to the article, Baker, Ward and Leeson are already in the studio recording Series 5 of The Fourth Doctor Adventures due to be released in 2016. I have to say for me this has been one of the best announcements of the 50th anniversary year so far. And while we have just over a year to wait for the first of these two treats and two years to wait for the second, just the thought of hearing these three brilliant characters back together in brand new stories fills me with just about enough excitement to get me through the long wait. Subscribers get more at bigfinish.com So the BBC have released Night of the Doctor, confirming what many fans had hoped for and believed for some time, that the 8th Doctor, Paul McGann, would be returning to the role of the Doctor on television once again. Night of the Doctor was a seven-ish minute piece focusing on the 8th Doctor's final moments and bringing back the sisterhood of Khan. Quite aside from the fans exploding with joy all over the place, this short episode still raises some questions and still suggests that Moffat is playing around once again with the canon. Eight regenerating into the War Doctor and not Christopher Eccleston's Ninth Doctor? Of course, speculation is rife about what all this means, but one explanation that I heard immediately before recording was that John Hurt's Doctor, like the Valyard, is not a real Doctor, therefore doesn't count in the regeneration count. Your thoughts? Recently interviewed, Stephen Moffat himself said, I've been really, really quite careful about the numbering of the Doctors. He's very specific, the John Hurt Doctor, that he doesn't take the name of the Doctor. He doesn't call himself that. He's the same Time Lord, the same being as the Doctors either side of him, but he's the one who says, I'm not the Doctor. So the 11th Doctor is still the 11th Doctor, and the 10th is still the 10th. Moffat went on to say later in the same interview, Technically, if you really counted it, the David Tennant Doctor is two Doctors, on account of the Metacrisis Doctor. It's not a matter of counting the regenerations, but of counting the faces of the Time Lord that calls himself the Doctor. There's an anomaly Doctor slotted in there somewhere, that's all. In the script today of the Doctor, Matt's Doctor was called the Eleventh, and David's was called the Tenth. So the numbering stays exactly the same, and we call Peter Capaldi the Twelfth Doctor. So what do you think? If you have any theories, you can post them on Theta Sigma's Doctor Who podcast page on Facebook, or you can email me on respectthething at outlook.com. Come here, you scrumptious little beauty. A box? Doctor, what is it? I've got mail. I did ask on the Facebook page what your thoughts were on the Night of the Doctor, and James Morell said, A few words. Paul McGann is back, and it's about time. Which I thought summed it up very nicely, so thanks for that, James. Michael Doyle commented, I was downright giddy. I watched it three times in a row. Love the fact that when he regenerated, John Hurt was young in that reflection. It makes you wonder how long did he fight in the Time War? Good question, that one, Michael, and one I hope that will be answered, perhaps, in next week's special. In line with this week's podcast being all about unit Dr. Harry Sullivan, I asked on the Facebook page what your memories were of the one-time Fourth Doctor companion. Jeff Waddell simply commented, Giant Clam. 
Now I've got to admit that with all the memories I held of Harry, I'd simply forgotten about this incident of when Harry is trying to get from one side of Skyro to the other through the underground caverns and steps on one of Davros's discarded experiments. Thanks for the memory, Jeff. Ian Don Marta was born on the 28th of October 1944 and was best known for his role as Harry Sullivan in Doctor Who, from December 1974 to September 1975, with a non-regular one serial return in November and December 1975. Born in Warwickshire, the son of Donald Martyr and his wife Helen Donaldson, Martyr graduated from the University of Oxford in 1969 and started work at the Bristol Old Vic Theatre, where he served as a stage manager, in addition to acting minor stage roles. To support his low actor's wages, he also worked for a time as a milkman and a schoolteacher. In 1968, he married Rosemary Hayland, with whom he has two sons. Martyr sadly died suddenly at his home in London in 1986, on his 42nd birthday, after suffering a heart attack triggered by complications of diabetes. In 1971, Martyr auditioned for the regular role of Captain Mike Yates in the eighth season of Doctor Who. He was offered the part, but was then unable to accept it due to a prior commitment. The production team was sufficiently impressed that they kept him in mind, and then cast him in a supporting role in the 1973 story Carnival of Monsters. The following year, Marta was cast in the role of Harry Sullivan, a character developed by the production team after they decided that the incoming fourth Doctor would be portrayed by an older actor, and thus would not be able to handle some of the more physical action scenes. After 40-year-old Tom Baker was cast, however, such concerns were allayed, and Harry was written out after only one season. Marta remained involved with Doctor Who after his departure from the regular cast. He co-wrote the script for a feature film version, provisionally entitled Doctor Who Meets Scratchman, in collaboration with Tom Baker and director James Hill. Due to a lack of funding, the project was ultimately abandoned. Marta's plot concerned the fourth Doctor coming face-to-face with Scratchman, an ancient term for the devil. The finale was to have been acted out on a colossal pinball table, with the holes in the table being portals to other dimensions. He later became involved with the writing of novelisations of Doctor Who TV serials, for Target Books, penning nine such adaptations in the late 70s and early 1980s. Marta's novelisations were somewhat controversial, most notably when the word bastard appeared in his novelisation of the 1967 story The Enemy of the World. The last of Marta's Doctor Who novelisations was The Rescue, which had to be completed by range editor Nigel Robson due to Marta's unexpected death. Marta was one of a small group of Doctor Who actors to write licensed fiction based on the series. He also wrote an original spin-off novel for Target, Harry Sullivan's War, featuring the return of his character, which was published in 1986 and was one of the earliest original Doctor Who-related novels to be released. He had been planning both a sequel to this novel and an adaptation of his unused Doctor Who Meets Scratchman script at the time of his death. Marta's acting career beyond Doctor Who comprised mainly guest roles in episodes of series such as the BBC's Bergerac in 1981 and Granada Television's The Return of Sherlock Holmes in 1986. He also had minor roles in several films, such as The Abominable Doctor Fibes in 1971 and The Medusa Touch in 1978. Marta lived and worked in New Zealand in the early 1980s, appearing in the soap opera Close to Home from 1982. In addition to his Doctor Who novelisations, Marta wrote adaptations of several 1980s American films, such as Splash and Down and Out in Beverly Hills, all for Target, and its imprint, Star Books. Some of these books were published under the pen name Ian Don. But what of the character of Harry? Dr. Harry Sullivan is a commissioned surgeon lieutenant in the Royal Navy, who is attached as a medical officer to UNIT. He's first mentioned, though not seen, in Planet of the Spiders. When the Brigadier thinks the third Doctor has gone into a coma, he calls Dr. Sullivan and asks him to come to the Doctor's laboratory, but then tells him not to bother when Benton wakes the Doctor by offering him a cup of coffee. In Robot, after the Doctor's regeneration, Sullivan is called in to attend him, and ends up then travelling aboard the TARDIS with the Fourth Doctor and Sarah Jane, for several subsequent adventures. Harry is rather old-fashioned, and stereotypically English in his attitudes. Somewhat accident-prone, he once claimed he was always trapping his nose in the doors of Portsmouth Barracks. He often employs slightly archaic language, for example referring to Sarah Jane affectionately as Old Thing or Old Girl. 
He is nonetheless depicted as possessing great bravery and a can-do attitude, adapting well to the many strange situations in which he finds himself. But he can also be quite clumsy and unsubtle, once leading the Doctor to declare in a moment of frustration that Harry Sullivan is an imbecile. Nonetheless, he is well liked by both the Doctor and Sarah Jane, and indeed has a slightly flirtatious relationship with her. The character of Harry Sullivan was originally devised by the production team as a means of handling any action scenes required in episodes when they had envisaged the new Doctor being played by an older actor. Sarah Jane even jokingly compares Harry to James Bond at one point. But when 40-year-old Tom Baker was cast, this was no longer a concern, and the decision was taken to write Harry out. Something producer Philip Hinchcliffe later admitted was probably a mistake, as Harry was a likeable and popular character who worked well with both of his fellow leads. Harry's last regular appearance is in the season 13 opener Terror of the Zygons, which had actually been made at the conclusion of the 12th production block and held over to start the following season. At the conclusion of this story, he chooses to return to London by train rather than by TARDIS with the Doctor and Sarah, who continue their adventures without him. He does, however, make his final appearance three stories later in the Android Invasion, both as the original Harry and an Android double. A later production team gave some consideration to bringing Harry Sullivan back for a guest appearance in the 1983 story Mordrin Undead, part of the programme's 20th anniversary season. Their first choice was the character of Ian Chesterton, but those plans fell through due to actor William Russell being unavailable. In the end, they decided to use the Brigadier instead. Harry is mentioned in the story, however, when the Brigadier tells the Fifth Doctor that he was seconded to NATO. His photograph appears in the pilot episode of the Sarah Jane Adventures, hanging on the side of a roof joist in Sarah Jane Smith's attic, near a portrait of the Brigadier and a photograph of Sarah Jane and K-9 Mark III. These were the first uses of classic era film in the revived era of the Hooniverse. Also in this episode, when Sarah Jane is thinking of names for her son, she mentions Harry. In the story Death of the Doctor, Sarah Jane mentions that Harry continued as a doctor and saved thousands of lives with his vaccines. And that's all for this week. As always, my thanks for listening, and I hope you've enjoyed the show at least a little. If you have any feedback, please feel free to message me on Theta Sigma's Doctor Who podcast on Facebook, or you could email me at respectthething at outlook.com. Next week, I'd like to talk a little bit about how you'll be, or will by then have, celebrated Doctor Who's 50th anniversary. So why not post your celebration plans on the Facebook page, or email me at the usual address. So until next week, when we'll be taking a look at the 11th Doctor, and talking Doctor Who 50th anniversary celebrations... Well, goodbye, my boy. You did quite well. Quite well. Hmm. It's reassuring to know that my future is in safe hands... Thank you for listening to Theta Sigma's Doctor Who podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all copyright and property of the BBC, and no infringement is intended. 